we've come to that time of year where year tens need to start thinking about the subjects that they might like to choose for year 11 and 12. And you might say to me, well, why do you do this so early? It's only in the middle of July. Well, as you would appreciate, this is a very complex process that involves the allocation of teaching staff, finalizing new subjects, development of curriculum and assessment, and most importantly, from my office, building a new timetable, which probably takes us the best part of five to six months. And so to that end, we ask our students who are currently in year 10 to select their subjects for years 11 and 12 so we can begin that extensive process. Now, what a lot of people probably don't realize, and it's quite significant, that the rest of the college actually hangs on that information when we're building a timetable because we give priority to our new senior students. So once we have those teachers in place, we are then able to allocate our teaching staff accordingly uh, down through the rest of the school, through middle school, and actually through junior school as well. So it's important that we get this information early. But I will stress right from the word go, even though students are selecting subjects, this is not firm and in concrete, let's say. Students still have the opportunity to change their minds if they wish. So where to begin? Well, the new and updated middle and senior curriculum overviews for 2021 are now available through either the Student Cafe or the Fairhome website where you are now. So if you have a look down on the website, and I'm scrolling down, we can see subject selection, a very unflattering uh, photograph of myself, but I think rather an interesting video that I would encourage you to watch where I talk generally about subject selection. And then the video underneath talks about the ATAR and the QCE, which of course for many of you know now replaces the antiquated OP system. So both of those videos are a good little Kickstarter, but what you'll be really interested in and what I would um, alert you to is the Senior School Year 11 and 12 Curriculum Overview for 2021. So if you click on that link, you will be directed to the bottom of your screen where a PDF will open of that document. And here we are. And you'll notice it is a very extensive document of 44 pages. And if we scroll through, it's on the very first page, it gives us the key staff who will be teaching in 2021, the heads of department, our head senior teachers. We may then move on to an introduction by myself where I talk about uh, the difference between general and applied subjects. Moving on, we look at the procedure for the selection of subjects, how we believe that the college is the best, uh, the best steps to take in selecting subjects. Then we look at um, the new system, as I was talking about earlier, of um, the ATAR and the QCE, what is different about the new system and the assessment changes that have come about through that. There is some information on the ATAR, and I will draw on this a little later in the video. Um, there is more information on Student Cafe, which I'll, I'll, um, I'll address when we get there. We then talk about the Queensland Certificate of Education, which is the qualification that all year 12s achieve at the end of their tenure of high school. And then finally, we look at the criteria for subject selection, uh, subject selection, and then we actually get into the subjects themselves that are on offer next year. So I would encourage you, this is a great place to start once you've watched those introductory videos, um, to read through this document, because as we scroll through, you will see, we look at alternative pathways, but then we get onto the actual subject descriptors, beginning with the arts. Now, what I've just shown you is public information. So everyone, no matter where you are in the world, can access, access, access that information. However, what is probably more significant is to have a look at Student Cafe, because under Student Cafe, we actually have some videos and we have some more information that is not for public access, simply through privacy reasons. So what we would encourage you to do, as you can see from my email, is ask your daughter to log on to Student Cafe so you can work through the Student Cafe together. So let's go there now. And this is what you should see. Here we are, Student Cafe. We click on that button over there and it brings us up to the student cafe and there's all information for students and if we choose senior year subjects that's where we're going and if we choose that i'll just move myself over here so we can see if we choose that you'll see that we have got tiles on every subject and the information there 
is um, probably a little bit more student friendly, let's say. Um, but it also contains some very interesting videos. So let's choose, for example, if we chose science. And if we choose science, we'll see we have agricultural science, biology, chemistry, etc. And if we were to click on the arrow, there is more information on biology, including pathways for students who choose biology. But what is of great interest, of course, is on the right here, there is a little video. Now, these videos have all been created at Fairholme College and they star our students and our teachers talking about the subjects and they are really worthwhile watching. And I do believe that in all of these tiles you will come across these very, very informative videos indeed. And I would certainly recommend that you spend some time having a look at those. So our second step that we offer at Fairhome in guiding students and parents towards senior school is we offer a set plan. Now a set plan is whereby um, your daughter is invited to meet with either myself, Dr. Evans, uh, Miss Katrina Sharp, who is our deputy principal, um, Laura Anderson, who is our careers officer, or Miss Ali Hollandale, who is our pathways coordinator. And between the five of us, um, we uh, divide up the current year tens into groups, and we sit down with the student and you uh, as parents so that we can chat about your daughter's strengths, her interests, perhaps where um, she might see herself going once she leaves her home. And, and look, don't worry, most students at this stage certainly um, don't uh, really have firm and, and fixed ideas. Some do, um, but many don't. Um, but it is what we do is we begin this process, and it's a really enjoyable time where we can actually sit down and um, begin planning the pathway to the future. Now, the great thing about the set plan is it's not a one-off. So if you were assigned to Dr. Evans, who would be your set planner, Dr. Evans would look after you and your daughter all the way through to the end of year 12. So she would uh, review the set plan in year 11, and then once again, sometimes on more than one occasion in year 12. So that by the time you get to the end of year 12, both you as parents and your daughter have got a very, very clear vision of where your daughter's pathway lies and what options are open to her. So in the next week or so, you'll be contacted by one of us and we will arrange a set plan meeting. Now, unfortunately, under the current COVID situation, we will have to do this through Zoom, um, but we will certainly ensure that the, this happens. And uh, as I say, you'll be receiving some information from us in the coming days. The third opportunity that we would recommend or we would suggest for your daughter is that she speaks to her teachers and her home group teacher because these are the real experts. So for example, if your daughter is interested in science, or teaching, uh, learning about physics or chemistry in year 11 and 12, then she should be talking to her current science teacher, likewise with English, mathematics, etc. So teachers are a great resource um, and we would encourage you as parents to do exactly the same as well. Contact the teachers, they're only an email away and they would be more than happy to answer your questions. And finally, there will also be opportunities for your daughter to attend what um, we call speed dating. But it's speed dating with a difference, and it's, speed, it's subject speed dating. And what this is, is that we run lunchtime sessions down in our Greta Center, where we have our current year 12 and some year 11 students who are on call. And what happens is they are there to provide information from a student's perspective. Now, there are no teachers present at this, so students have really got carte blanche to talk about their subject and to, um, to provide information on um, how they have found the subject, how they've found the assessment uh, without us um, being there, so to speak. And we found this works really, really well. Um, and so these uh, sessions are planned uh, for the weeks to come as well. So how does your daughter actually go about deciding what subjects that she might like to choose for year 11 and 12. And before I begin, remember, no matter what she chooses, she can change her mind. We even have a cooling off period for the first month in year 11. So when your daughter gets into a class, if she's chosen geography, and geography may not be what, um, after a few lessons, she realizes, well, you know, I should have rather chosen modern history. Well, that's fine. Providing that we can timetable it, we can make those changes without really any great difficulty. Uh, and the same goes for to, to say if she um, selects her subjects, her six preferences, 
uh, between now and the end of the year, she has the opportunity to change her mind as well. Again, providing that the timetable fits into her plan. So firstly, I think the most important thing, and I, I know that my teachers will agree, the most important consideration when choosing subjects is for students to choose subjects based on those that they enjoy the most. Because the more they enjoy a subject, the more likely they are to do well in the subject. It is a myth that students who choose subjects who are supposedly more challenging uh, will get a higher ATAR. And we used to say this when we ran the OP system as well. A high ATAR is only gained by achieving well in chosen subjects, regardless of the subjects we choose. And yes, we know that there are going to be subjects and that are going to be weighted higher than others. But if a student is not performing well in one of those challenging subjects, it certainly isn't going to be a benefit um, in, um, in achieving a high ATAR. So again, we would suggest that she chooses subjects and she can choose any combination she likes, providing there's a maths and science in there. The other four, she can choose whatever she wishes. And hopefully there are subjects that she enjoys. So it goes without say that students also choose subjects that they're good at. And the best place to look, of course, is the current results and chat to the teacher. Um, and because if she's good at a subject, it's more likely that she will see, succeed in those subjects in year 11 and 12. One also has to be aware that there will be some tertiary courses um, that will require a prerequisite. In other words, the university will request that students have studied either, let's say, an advanced mathematics or a science, a particular science, if they wish to do a certain tertiary course. Now, we are very happy to, to assist with that. Um, there is more information on this, of course, on the QTAC website. But in the set plan, we can walk you through those prerequisites at that time if you are unsure. And even though I've said that a student can choose whatever, we do think that um, it is advisable not to choose too narrow a range of subjects. As you would be aware, traditional occupations, um, the evolution of new job categories and the high level of competition for tertiary places, it, it's sensible to keep one's options open. And it's the college's experience that many students in year 10, and I've alluded to this earlier, and year 11 are, are not really ready to make definite career choices as yet. And therefore, they shouldn't unnecessarily lock themselves into a narrow pathway. Uh, because this is not a lifetime do or die decision. We're just beginning. Now, I'm not going to go into the, um, the ATAR system as such and scaling. You can read all about that on the Student Cafe. And I'll just direct you to those sites if that is something that you need to have a look at um, urgently, let's say. So here we are back on Student Cafe, um, and there is a button here which says QCE and ATAR. So if we click that button, this takes you to a video um, that's been prepared on the ATAR. There are some um, excellent videos of our students, particularly on our um, Pathways program. And underneath here, you will see that I have uh, the assessment policy. Uh, that um, we run at Fairholme. There is also the ATAR presentation that I gave to parents back in 2019 that is still valid today, as is the subject selection PowerPoint, and the transition from OP to ATAR. So if you've had a daughter who's been through the OP system, you might like to read through that um, PowerPoint um, to find out what the differences are. And finally, at the bottom, I produced a series of ATAR bulletins called ATAR News, uh, volumes one to five, that you can read at your leisure. In due course, I will be sending information, more information about the ATAR and QCE home to families. But for the moment, I think you've got enough on your plate with subject selection. Now, in the email that I sent you, you will note that Mr. Davis has given some very important information about English and I would highly recommend that you read that. What is important to understand is that for tertiary study in Australia, tertiary institutions require that students pass four semesters of either general English or literature. And those are the two general Englishes, let's say, that we offer at Fairholme College. But obviously, there are students who really do struggle with English in year 10. 
and therefore the college also offers essential English. But essential English is not always recognized by tertiary institutions. And certainly we can give you more information on that when we have our set plan. So the final process is your daughter will receive an email in the coming week, which will ask her to start putting in her selections for subjects. Now, please don't worry, because as I said, we can change these. And certainly if the set plan um, has not happened by the time the closing date, which is the 17th of August comes around, we can always make changes after that. It's just so that we can get an idea of what subjects your daughters are interested in, so that we can be in that long extensive process of staffing and building a timetable. Please note um, with two subjects, both fashion and hospitality, hospitality being new, we do have a cap on those subjects. And that's simply due to workplace health and safety restrictions and also our facilities. So we can only take a maximum number of 20 students in both of those classes. So the advice we have given to students is if you, are wish, if you wish to study either fashion or hospitality, please make sure on your preferences uh, they are numbered one and two, if, if both, or, or one, certainly because we work from top down to bottom when it comes to preferencing. The online subject selection will close on Monday the 17th, I think I said the 24th, it is Monday the 17th, which is in a month's time, at midnight. And it's hoped by then that the year 10s will have given us um, their information at that time. But as I said, remember they are able to change their minds. And please remember that in 95% of the cases, students will be able to study the combination of subjects they desire. However, in about five percent of cases this may not be possible because the way that the lines of the timetable are set. I'm sure that some of you watching this have had this experience in middle school, maybe even year 10, where your daughter has had a clash. That still can happen. It's less likely in years 11 and 12, but it is still a possibility. And also um, there may be subjects that we don't run simply because we don't have the students um, to make that viable for us. So just be aware of that, please. But of course, we will be contacting students if there is a clash or if uh, the college has determined that a subject is not viable. And as emphasized, and I'll emphasize it again, students can change their minds. Students and parents will be notified in late October um, of their subjects for 2021 so that parents can begin the process of um, gathering stationary books, etc from the home store. Thank you very much for listening and watching this video. I wish you all of success as you move ahead with your subject selection. And if you're on my set plan list, I really look forward to meeting you.